Paint all the things! In today's episode, Snowy Bases. Hi, and welcome to Paint All the Things. Today we're going to be talking about how to create a snow-topped base. There are a couple of different ways for this. Um, when I first tried to figure out how the best way to make this, make it actually look like a snow topped uh, base, I used a couple of different techniques, some things that I'd heard at the game store, at the hobby store. Um, one of those things was to actually use Citadel's texture paint, more in, uh, mountain snow. Now, if you not use this, basically it's really thick paint. It's got grit in it. It almost, you know, kind of looks like some kind of grout. And um, I really didn't like the look of it. For certain things, if you want to keep a lot of detail, like how I've done with this one, then yeah, it's not that bad, but I didn't really like the color. It came off kind of bluish, so I didn't really end up using it. Um, one of the other things about snow is that you have a lot of shine. If, uh, if you've never seen snow, snow usually has a lot of particles in it that reflect off of sunlight or what have you. And on this one, I tried to add a little bit of that shine on top of the morphine or the, uh, the Morn Fang uh, snow, and it just really didn't look right. The, the, mount, <laughs> the Morn Mountain Snow. Uh, so I used some crushed glass to do that, just sprinkle it on there afterwards, and it, it ended up looking really kind of weird. It, it almost looked disco, you know? I mean, it just, it just didn't look snowy. It didn't look realistic. So I went through a couple of different other techniques. Some people have told me, oh, well, all you need to do is just throw some, some glue on there and then just put some flock on it and that really didn't work either because it was just so flat and snow is just not flat snow has bumps it's puffy it almost looks like the you know the marshmallow man laid down for the winter so that's what I really wanted to accomplish with this um, also there are some parts where it looks kind of melted where you want you know it you want it to look like a, maybe a creek or something um, so there's lots of different ways and different things that you can do with this effect that makes it look good. Sometimes you might want to cover the entire base. Other times like this, you want it a little more sparse so you can see more detail, like the Dead Thousand Suns Marine there with blood coming out. Even though Thousand Suns don't actually have blood, but that's beside the point. Looks cool, right? Yeah, so we're going to keep going with that. So let's get into it. All right, so now we need to get all of our rocks down and grit one thing that you can use is the school glue but i prefer to use army painters uh basing glue it's a little bit thicker and i feel like it holds a little bit better um one little dab will do you you don't need too much but you need to make sure that the entire base is covered now at this point i like to use a brush I, um, you could use your finger if you really really want to but i prefer a brush uh a because i feel i have a lot more control over where the glue goes and two I don't get glue all over my finger which is good so after you get your glue down to where you want it you take your biggest rocks that you've you've gotten if you're going to be using some rocks and place the bigger rocks down first um, one thing I like to do also is to take my mini and make sure that he actually fits. And so that is, you know, one foot isn't stepping on a big rock or, um, you know, he just fits somewhere in the middle. The weight is distributed properly. And then I'll start placing other, uh, other rocks if I need to, or I might just get right into the grit. sure you shake off all the excess and at this point if you feel like the rocks um, aren't quite in the position that you want them to be in um, you can still move them around without a real big uh, problem because nothing is quite uh, cemented down yet everything's still very wet so if you need to move them now is the time to do that but if you're happy with where they are then it is time to prime now, after it is all primed, uh, we're ready to start dry brushing. I like to prime in black. Um, I really like the way that it uh, really contrasts with the white of the snow. 
um, but I do like to, my rocks to look a little bit more realistic. So I will dry brush these in Dawnstone uh, to start off with. Now the way I dry brush, or at least the way I start this particular type of dry brushing is I don't really do it very uh, uh, traditional. I mean, it's it's not a light dry brushing. It's almost, almost like a base coat, but not quite as full as a base coat, and not quite as light as a normal dry brush because I like the gray to really pop out as well. So now that the Dawnstone is done, I'm gonna switch over to Administratum Gray and basically do the same thing. This coat also goes on a little bit thicker than a normal dry brush, but um, it does go on lighter than the Dawnstone. So just get, you know, use your paper towel, get as much paint as you can off of the brush and then really start applying. Remember, as always, whenever you are painting, especially when you're painting these types of miniatures, less is more. It's always better to put on less paint because you can always put on more paint. But if you put on too much paint, obviously that's gonna be a problem. And now that we're done with Administrative Gray, it's time to put on the last finishing touch. Um, I like to go ahead and go straight to White Scar uh, at this point. Some people might use like something uh, like Celestra Gray or just a lighter gray, but since I'm actually using uh, snow, uh, snow effect on this base, I like to put down a base of white um, underneath the snow instead of just the light gray. Now, if I'm normally using um, just regular uh, rocks and I want to paint them gray, then I'll use the light gray. But again, for the snow, I find that having that underlying white uh, part of it actually lends to the snow effect a whole lot better. And now it's time for the magic to happen. Let's make snow. All you need is some snow flock. It doesn't matter what kind, whatever kind you prefer. Also some white glue. Um, I prefer school glue. You could also use PVA glue. Something to mix it all in and something to mix with. So let's get to mixing. All right, so you take your flock, you take your glue, you put them all together, and what do you got? Facts of life. No, actually you got some really cool snow paste. Um, first thing you want to do is get your container. These are just very plastic disposable containers. They have no meaning to me whatsoever, so I have no problem just abusing them. Um, and then pouring in some of the glue. You don't want to pour in too much for, oh, that's, we'll work it, we'll work it. It's okay, I'll deal with it. <laughs> Make the best of a bad situation. In this case, what I could have done is actually, uh, use these on quite a number of different bases all at the same time because this stuff it really does go a long long way after you got your glue in there just add a little bit of the flock a little tap 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 a -roo. Get some of your flock in there I don't want to put in too much now and then just mix it all together Take a look at it. It's a little bit too wet. I want to add a little bit more flock into it. Just try and get it a little bit more dry looking. A little bit more gritty. Try and get all of the flock in there that I can. And yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. Now comes the fun part getting all of it on there. Now you could use a paintbrush if you like, some people prefer it. Um, it does take a beating on your on your paintbrush, so make sure that you use something really old. I personally like to use the, uh, the molding tools, um, and actually this one is a Citadel uh, molding tool, it's one of the brand new ones they just came out with, it's made out of plastic, and I think it works really, really well for this. It's really, um, holds up under pressure, I can move things around pretty, uh, accurately so yeah, just kind of get it in there and you kind of want to put the snow where it would accumulate naturally so on the tops of rocks um, 
on the flat areas. I don't really put it too much in the crevices and the creases. Although you could, depending on, you know, if you want to make it look like a some kind of snowstorm um, occurred to the left, you know, came in, came in from the north or what have you. Winter's coming. Did I just make a Game of Thrones reference? Did I really do that? Oh, man. All right. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, get that little nasty thing out of there. Now, um, this the one thing about this paste is that it, sometimes it doesn't really go on all that easily. It's, it actually doesn't stick all that great when you first put it on. So you do kind of have to work it in there and get it into the places that you want. Um, but it takes a little while for it to actually harden down and, and dry out. So you've got plenty of time to move it where you want. Now, I could just leave it like this, but I don't like it uh, to be quite as wet looking as it is. It will dry a little bit uh, wet like that. So at this point, I would, I'd add just a touch, just a scotch of flock, just a little bit on the top, because I do like that powdery kind of look. Uh, to my snow, but again, it's just just a touch and At this point again, it could be done. You could call it a day But I like to add just a little bit more uh, Realism to it and I'll show you what I mean in just a sec Now what I really like to do to add that last bit of effect is to add some shine and I do that with secret weapon scenics crushed glass Now one thing to keep in mind. This is actual glass it's been crushed down grain fine, but it is glass. You have to be very careful with this. You don't want to inhale it. Uh, you really don't want to get it on your skin. So if you're going to be using this, uh, you can use a tool, or I prefer to use gloves because the way that the glass reacts to um, any type of tool that I've used, it just it, it, it doesn't adhere very well. It, it doesn't stay on the tool, and it just makes a mess. So all I do is just use a pair of gloves, and sprinkle just enough to really kind of get the right reflectivity off of the top of the base. But that is how I make a snowy base. I hope this video helped you. I hope you learned a lot. And as always, happy wargaming.